Hey Hollywood fans and welcome to this week's show. So as we said last week, we were flat out on the big edit that was Legends or Rhino Park and Old Money, the first round of the South African Cross Country National Championship. And this is huge as well. The GXCC guys have been running such a good ship for the last few years. Every now and again, they get the magical phone call. Can you help us out with the national here, there, everywhere? Last year, they did a Belter, they ran two rounds of the national championship. They've got two rounds of the national championship this year. Most importantly, round one and the final round, which is round number five. But we were lucky enough to get hold of our good bud there at VW Mastercars Hatfield, Big Chris, as well as Big Harry at the Franchise Co. And we managed to get enough budget to send a full crew out there to put together a production. We've been making a lot of noise about this for the last couple of weeks. We've slaved over this one. We've put a slightly different format, slightly different look and feel on it. And you'll agree with me, I hope, after you watch this, that this is an absolute banger. Huge numbers, the biggest national entries we have seen for about five or six years. And it shows as well the classes, the races, the drama that went down at Legends. Check this out. This Hollywood Hills and LiveX production of the Trademark Group National Championships Round 1 of the Cross Country Series was proudly brought to you by VW Mastercars and the Franchise Co. Yeah, firstly, welcome to round one of the National Cross Country Series out here at Legends. Um, a big thanks to Corbus and the farm owners, obviously, for letting us use this facility. Um, it's a great venue, good amenities, and uh, as you can see, it's attracted a lot of crowds. So, yeah, we hope it's going to be a good day. Um, I think it's a perfect opener for the season. Uh, mixed terrain, lots of variants. You know, they're going to go into the copy down in the lowlands. We've had some big rain, so. Um, I think it's going to test sort of a range of skill and uh, we'll see who comes out on top. The start of the day would be all about the juniors. They'd be first to the gate to go out onto their loop which was made up in the flatlands. Junior loop, the guys are going out on a 20k loop um, and probably not 2Ks of the entire loop will be on any of the old existing parts. We've cut completely brand new parts everywhere. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of twists and turns in the grasslands, but we've had some good rain here last night just to settle the dust and it's going to really make it loamy and grippy out there. They're going to have a, a lot of fun. Uh, I just want to look at the track at first and then I want to go full out. Um, this year, I think I just have to be smooth because if I'm smooth, I'm going to be fast. So don't fall and just go as quickly as I can. I think it's going to be very sandy. Um, it's my first national, so um, I'm stretching a bit, but I'm ready. I'm planning to have fun. I'm not going out for the win, but yeah. Uh, I'm, I just want to try have fun, maybe try to get a top five or so, and just try and do my best I can. Awesome, good luck today. Thank you. A couple of familiar faces and a little bit of new blood sprinkled in there, and that's what we like to see in cross country racing, especially when it comes to the nationals. Legends is a classic race venue and a good practice track as well, which means a lot of the guys will be familiar with how to set up their bikes on this track. but. No one gets any advantage when it comes to national championship racing. Everyone was going out there and having to learn and do their homework on lap number one before they started getting into their rhythm, into their zone and clicking off the laps. Going out there in national rankings as well would set things up for the day. You'd see a couple of strange results as riders would come through the pack and find their allotted position. The live pits was also something to learn for a lot of the riders. Very cool situation coming forward into 2023 was that a lot of the big factory teams had picked up juniors and started the development nice and early. Hopefully to build some champions for the pro categories later on in their careers. The 
National 65s. Very cool to see Campbell Dupria swinging a leg. This kid is unstoppable in 2023 at the moment on a 50cc, but for the sake of the Nationals, he moved it up into the 65s, walked away with a number six finish. Wilco Deploy also a 50cc specialist moving up into the 65s. He's been on and off the machine on the Yami for the last couple of seasons, and walks away with a very solid number five finish. He'll have been hoping for a little bit higher finish than that, but he had to take a one step back because Josh Fotheringham found the Legends track to his liking. He had the sweet spot set up on his right, and he was inside of a number four. Matty Mayer, who was one of the big threats coming into this event, we caught up with him before the ride, and he said he wanted to ride smooth and clean. He got that done. Third place is an outstanding ride at the Nationals and puts him well in position. For little John Luke van der Vestesen in his first ever season of National Championship Racing and his first season on the 65s, he surprised himself and many others with a stellar second spot. DJ Kutsia has been the man of the moment on the 65 gate so far in 2023. Pretty much unstoppable at every race he has entered, and he continues that good run of form with a win at the opening round of the Nationals. Into the 85s where we saw some good numbers on the page, focusing in on the top eight. Liam Skippers riding out of the Franchise Co. CIT sleepover Honda squad gets it done inside of a number eight ride. He would have been expecting to climb a little bit higher based on his early season form. Same story goes for Jaden Els. Obviously had some issues on the day, could not climb higher than a number seven ride. Riding out of Rubine Racing, Bernard Clanhams was waving the flag nice and high for a number six finish, getting it done and breaking into some rock solid points. Drix van der Merwe riding out of the VW Mastercars V-Dub Hatfield squad is coming on in leaps and bounds in 2023. His first crack at a national and his first top five. For Mackenzie Bam, the Mac attack. She said she didn't really want to push too hard today, just learning her craft. Remember, she's taken championships on the 50cc and the 65s. 85 is going to have to wait a little bit as she cuts her teeth, but a good run of form. Fourth place, she'll be happy with that. So will big Chris Bam as well. Corbin Muller, who had, by his own high standards, a relatively slow start to his racing campaign in 2023, but he seems to have come to life at the opening round of the National Series. Taking his triple four motorsport machine to a three ride. The famous 400 and the double F of Franco Ferri is in great form in 2023. Second place here shows that he is going to be a championship contender on every single facet that he rolls the dice and rips the bars on. Second place only losing out one position to Murray Smith who, as with many of the champion elect riders, has gone undefeated so far on this season's run of form. A great pickup for Harry and the Honda squad to bring home their first checkers of the day. Confirmation of Murray, the Smither, getting it done on the top step ahead of Faree, Muller, Bam, Drickers van der Merwe, Clanhams, Al Skippers, Deister and Smith take us to the top 10 with GJ Kutsia on the top step once again. Not too far off his wheel with John Luke van der Vestazen with Mayer, Fotheringham, Deploy and Dupria taking us to a six ride. Juniors out the way, hold your breath. It's about to get wild for the seniors going out in the afternoon show. Massive entries coming in and a lot of chopping and changing in the off season. Different riders, different categories, different machinery. It was gonna be a wild ride out at Legends. Carl chats to us quickly once again about sponsors and how this all comes together. Yeah, uh, look, a big thank you to Kim uh, from Trademore Group. Uh, she, this is our third year that she's been supporting the series and it, it really has helped to grow it and get it to where it is. Um, without her, we wouldn't have been here. So um, thank you to them, we really appreciate it. And then obviously to um, you know the LiveX crew and you guys that are actually doing the filming, as well as VW Hatfield and uh, the Franchise Co. Thank you very much. And now to catch up with the riders. Um, look, it's the first race of the year. Um, I've been training hard, new bike, you know, new brand, Honda Wing South Africa, everything's new. Um, new kit, new look, new everything. Um, so it's been a bit of um, 
time, you know, setting up, getting dialed in. I'm a little bit nervous for today. We don't know where we're going to be, but um, I'm keen, you know, the nerves always serve good. I'm feeling good. I, I had a big crash at the GXCC, um, came off bad, broke the bike, broke myself. Um, I'm fixed now. I'm ready for this race, and I think it's going to be a good one. Yeah, so and obviously I changed teams um, end of last year, and we moved towards Sherco, and pretty much doing our own thing. So I'm managing the team at Trademore Sherco Racing. Um, we knew it's our first race out. Um, I'm going to try and be doing a bit more than Jura stuff this year, and I'm um, heading a bit more over overseas. So the focus for me is more on Jura, and um, I'll just be coming to the races in the managerial side and looking after the team and making sure they have good days. So yeah, as everybody knows, I've been out of racing and motorsport for a few years. Um, started my own little business outside of it, but yeah, anyway, uh, Ian sent me a Facebook message commenting on uh, a video I put on of myself riding my son's green peewee with him, uh, joking about it, and he invited me to come test one of the bikes on the open day here two months ago, whenever it was. Uh, it went well. Ian said to me, what, do, am I interested in racing? And I said, yeah, and I don't really have the setup for it. And he offered uh, a bike for me. And you know, fast forward two months later, and we're here. Uh, yeah, my change, obviously, I'm racing seniors now. Um, I think it's, uh, it's going to be cool, something different. Obviously, my main goal is the, the overall championship. I think that even when I was racing a lot too, uh, my goal was to, to try to win the overall. That's, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, nothing's changed in that, just I've got uh, Red one or it's nine instead of black. Uh, it's a combination of a few things. Um, obviously, the passion's always there, and uh, my boy's getting, he's turning two years old now, so I just want to expose the sport to him. The sport really meant well a lot for me, and it's given me a lot in life. So yeah, the least I can do is expose it to him, and hopefully one day he takes to it. And then yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, just to get back to the people that we love being around, and and the sport keeps you healthy and it keeps you. Keep your mind clean, so yeah. No, of course. I mean, Kenny and uh, obviously Lawrence is back now, and they're both past champions and basically legends of cross country off road world. Um, so, definitely not. I mean, I think Lawrence is going to be really strong. Kenny's going to come back and be strong, especially now that Lawrence is back and you know he's, he's going to have to work to. to want to race with Lawrence and I, of course he's going to want to race and try to be the best he can so for sure there's no um, no shortage of talent or speed in that class so it's going to be really interesting um, and like I said everyone's just going to get better and better throughout the year so I think uh, by the time the fifth round rolls around it's probably going to be quite an industry uh, interesting championship uh, at the end. Yeah. You still want to go fast, you still want to get Yeah away. I think I think when you're on the start line you're always going to be you know try to give your best and see how good you can do. But for me, uh, it's all about uh, enjoying the sports and uh, doing my best. And uh, if, if a win comes out of it, then it's a blessing. But yeah, we're just going to you know, make it happen. It, it was a bit last minute, so coming into the first round, we're not where we want to be. But, um, but it's uh, a big thanks to KTM South Africa for organizing me a bike. And uh, the rest we're putting together as we go. And yeah, we had to have fun and make the best of it. <laughs> Um, first, first national. Obviously, I'm just gonna take it easy. I don't want to push something and make it, have a mistake that cost me out another championship. So I'm gonna go out, try and get a great time trial, see where we start, and just push it through the day. But obviously, being cautious because you can't have another one gone. I think we've got the biggest class in the in the field, and. Um, now, it's always fun to have competitors in your class. It's going to be, it's, it's a learning curve for me still. It's my second year in uh, R3, but I think it's going to be good. Sure, it's coming along. Had surgery done in December. I uh, got back on the bike after about five weeks off. And now fitness is a bit down, but we're trying hard, getting it back, and hoping today's going to be a good day. How are you expecting it? You must have a bit of nerves built up. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty nervous. It's all um, completely new. I mean, I've ridden at Rhino Park for years, but mainly just the motocross tracks. I've done small little outrides. The first really bit of off-road riding I did, I did with the team on the open day. Um, so yeah, it's all new for me today. I'm nervous. I don't know what to expect. Um, taking everybody's advice as far as the road markings go and what to do, what to eat. and So yeah, it's going to be a fun day. I just want to get through it, no crashes, and uh, see where it takes us from there. Uh, Every time I get into a class, it feels like it's another thing. Yeah, so, uh, but the master class, 
coming from seniors, the guys that we surround ourselves with is uh, really competitive. It's out, hard. Yeah. So uh, yeah, one, so you never know what, you, what you expect. Uh, we yeah, I'm, I'm feeling Bodicom good. Side, My strategy is I'm just going to try to keep it safe and take it always easy and always want to win. But so we'll see how the, how the day goes. Yeah, the route and last year was, was nice, but this when you didn't treat me with very well. But this year we are we are coming stronger back. I'm expecting today to be quite fast. Sounds like most of the tracks new to us over the copy. Nothing, everything new. No one's ridden there before, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good day. I can't wait to see what the track holds for us. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, uh, you know, and I really hope it is uh, uh, all new layout. Um, I know a lot of the guys here get to ride. You know, this is Rhino Park Legends MX, so. It's an uh, advantage on their side, but you know, with the new with the new layout, I think it gives everyone gives everyone a bit of a, a fighting chance. So I'm excited to see what it's about. But yeah, like you say, it's it's a well known area. Um, we come and train here in the week, and um, like you said, it rained. So this place does get tricky when it's wet. It's muddy. It's got a couple of bogs. So yeah, the, you're gonna have to pick your line careful today. And I think after the first lap, the track will be open. And then it's, then it's flat out and just try to do your best. Hopefully it won't be too dusty, but uh, it's Joburg, so we, we always get a bit of dust. Um, other than that, the track sounds like it's gonna be a little bit tight, and uh, some, but also some straights and that. So hopefully an all round good track and we're just gonna see how it goes. Oh, I love the 350, it's like, it's a 250 but with a lot more power. It's nimble and still keeps up with the big dogs now. So happy to race it and we'll see you try and get some overalls this year. Yeah, the Yamaha, the, the day I got it, I rode it in and then it was just if I, if I rode a Yamaha the, my whole life and I'm very comfortable, comfortable on the bike and I think it's going to be like it today. There are a few gearing changes and everything so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, um, this team, it's awesome to be in this team, eh? Um, I can't thank my sponsors enough. I can't, I can't thank Gary enough, my dad, my mom, um, all our sponsors, Honda. I can't thank them enough. Um, yeah, we've, we've, it's, I'm, I'm privileged to be in this team. It's thanks cool home. just coming out here and very, uh, very excited to come out as and well uh, as join Ian and his team. Uh, that's part of the fun, it's really a fun, fun guys. That we have and uh, all the, the guys that are running us and, and uh, obviously previously uh, being on the 250 now on the 450 the Kawasaki I, I'm just here yeah, I just hope it doesn't uh, pull my arms off <laughs> yeah yeah really cool team I've been with Kawasaki before and I've got good memories racing with them so hopefully the, um, the good feelings come back as soon as the not the gate drops the flag drops or however it works um, yeah I'm extremely excited I just want to give him view from Motos Logs up uh, a shout out for thank you for everything he does for me and Uncle Mark from Henderson Racing Products everything he do for me so it wouldn't be possible without you guys. Of course, yeah, I've been with KTM for for a long time. I think since '09 and before that I was with them for two years. So it's basically a, a second or my home away from home and own racing. So. Of course, it's great to be with him, and then obviously riding with the brother team this year. I'm not kind of on my own deal with Red Bull, Red Bull KTM side anymore. Um, so yeah, it's cool. A uh, few changes, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. I think today might might get hot, but uh, be quite a good day today, hopefully. 100. percent I think that's that's been the whole plan. I think I think Harry's plan from the beginning. You know, um, it's 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 a, it's very much a family team, but we've gotten very professional, and there's been a lot of. Uh, definitely been a lot of fine tuning and tweaking here and there and I think there still is you know we're not all perfect but uh, we do try our very best. Yes no brother leader chair can't thank them enough for the new bikes. Oh it's running like a dream. It runs perfect and it's, things a beast. I'd just like to say thanks to Husqvarna South Africa, Pritchard, Fox Racing and everyone else who makes it possible. Great stories now to get down to it. In the morning, straight after the juniors, it was time trial and Brad Cox went fastest, putting his name in the hat on the big factory brother leader tread KTM. Pole position for him, getting chased down by Magic Mike and the Honda. That meant Cox was going to go out there and open up the big loop. Of course, time trial was just a dust off for the riders. Now they would go out and attack the big course. And for many, the first time they'd been up into the mountains and the copy, one of the key features of this race. Dave Cocker and Kieran Fitzgerald. 
huge story with Fitzgerald going so high in the time trial and now aging out up into seniors. Scotty Haygate had placed himself well. Taki Bogiagis also good for the Peps and Plastics Cower boys. Some very tasty riders positioning themselves inside the top 20. Vian Fensel had pulled out a big one. Carl chats to us quickly about GXCC and the track layout. Yeah, look, I mean, GXCC is always on point with their tracks, with their organizing. You know, also thanks to them um, for stepping in and helping us with this event. Uh, yeah, in terms of moving and shaking, there's a lot of guys that have changed classes, changed teams. Uh, it's great to have the Jap Japanese uh, bikes and manufacturers here. It, it adds a lot of spice to the racing. Um, and yeah, we had 150 entries, which I think for a standalone national is a record in the last sort of four to five years. So um, yeah, we're pretty stoked. Carl Stokes, and here's the man that laid out the track, Vian, to tell us what the boys have in store. The senior loop's got a nice mix up of everything. Some hardback, sand, rocky sections in the mountain, some flay land with uh, turf. Um, you know, it's, it's a real good mix up of everything. Some fast stuff to start with, then they're going into the mountain, bring the speed down. Then they've got a, a nice fast section uh, on the other side of the farm. And then again, when they go down to the junior loop, it really gets tight and twisty there, just to bring the speed down again. So yeah, overall, nice mix of everything. After the time trial, everyone was lined up nicely positioned, but it was Dav Cocker who set his stall out early. Made some rock and roll passes early on, out of third place in the qualifiers to get himself up there into clear air, making the pass on some super tasty riders, Magic Mike and Brad Cox. Cocker was keen to see what he could do about getting out there and running big numbers. Fitzgerald was stellar as well. It was clear in the early laps that this was a 350cc specialist track. As we had three 350s inside the top five. The live pits had everyone hopping and popping. Fiat Wenzel had done a outstanding ride to position himself inside of the top 10, first of the 250s. Climbing up the ladders then, we'll start with the age group categories in the Masters, one of the pickups in the off-season. And he did swing a leg last year as well for Peps of Plastics on the Kawasaki. Brian Potikunen takes a number seven ride in his first running of the Nationals. Francois Swanepoel always going to be able to bring home some good results, although the field is so deep this year, he only managed to eight top six this time around. With Anthony van der Valt, some new blood at the National Championships, moving up into a number five ride. He's part of that big Sherco squad, and he brought home some good bacon. Wayne Farmer had got himself prepped and ready to go out on the big Husqvarna Bikers Warehouse 450. A big dive in the mountains slowed his roll. He'd expect to see Farmer up there inside of the top two at least. Number four puts him on the back foot for the rest of the championship. Carl Mielizaru, also a rider back to full fitness, riding out of Alfie Cox and KTM Racing to a number three ride. Good numbers on the page for Millies. The top two though were light years ahead of the rest of the field. It was a Japanese all-out slugfest with Honda going up against Kawasaki. For Honda, it was Warwick Van Skoldbeck who at one point late in the race was actually leading until he rolled out, making an unforced error to drop one position and eventually take the flag with a number two spot, meaning that it was Peter Hull the late season pickup of Pets of Plastics on the Kawasaki who muscled the big KX450 machine all the way to the tippy top step. Gives Pets of Plastics their first celebration. First win at the Nationals for 2023 so far for the Kawas. You'll see Hull back, a former national championship winner, back on the numbers. For the senior gate, this was going to be a big story with a lot of young pro riders aging out and stepping up to the top steps. Kochi, one of his lowest national finishers, but still running incredibly fast pace for the Shimwells Yamaha and Enduro Zone boys. But he was not happy to have to take so many steps further back. He'd expect to be on the top threes. Zach De Silva 
standout performance for Zach Attack, riding out of Pepsi and Plastics on the support ride for the Husqvarna boys. Number five ride for him, one of his best ever national championship rides. And then just off the road from him, some new blood making the trip all the way to KZN. Rob Mulholland for the senior squad takes a surprise ride inside of the number fours. Like we said, coming into this series and this championship for 2023, there is going to be a lot of moving and shaking. It's going to take a couple of rounds until we figure out who's who in the zoo. We know who this dude is. It's our very own Lawrence Mahoney. Also aging out this year, starting to come back and throw his style around. I mean, this guy is a multiple national championship winner. He's taken a couple of wins at the roof. He's taken national championships across country and enduro. And now he's riding in the age group categories. Third place for him. Just up the road was Vaynor Dalport. He has been coaxed back into the racing world by Big Harry. And he swings a leg on the Honda, which he loves. The CRF X 450 under the franchise co CIT and Sleepover Colors. He'll be happy with that. We'll talk about the winner of that category a little later on in the show. Right now, we'll focus in on the screaming weasels that is the high school 125cc category races. Big numbers, and no one knew what to expect this time around. Nathan Westerdale with a number eight ride. Derek Karam, fresh off his opening round win in the GXTCs, but drops down to a number seven. Unfortunately, his brother had a big crash. Derek took it pretty hard, dropping pace and eventually down to a number seven. Blake Young walking away with a number six ride. He'll be stoked on that. The best ride we've seen out of Blake since he made the move up into the high school category. Definitely a rider to watch out for. A big threat on that Sherco squad getting mentored by the champion that is wonderful. Brandon Clark, Clarky, fresh off his 85cc national championship winning campaign in 2022. Walks away with a number five and the fastest lap time of the high school category with Rory Donaldson up the road from him inside of a number four. Donaldson setting the track alight, finding the sweet spot setup on his machine for the opening round of the national series. Daniel Peckham was up the road from him. Another rider coming out of the Trademore Group. Shoko squad setting things up nicely. Gotta love the fact that we've got so many manufacturers in the mix once again in 2023. And Shoko putting some big noise behind the high school category races. Tommy Scales up there into a number two spot. We've watched Tommy Scales get so good. Thought he was going to go down the extreme and enduro route, but this guy can rip it all the way through the gearbox as well. So great to see him on the pipe and on the cable at round number one of the championship. But it was Luke Walker. This guy also looked like he was going to go down the road of extreme enduro. They can do that. They've got plenty of time left on their careers. Luke Walker, though, takes his first ever high school. One, two, five. National Championship victory at the opening round. He's the dude to beat. Into the pro categories, OR3, starting out with Johnny Bruta. Remember, Franchise Co. CIT Sleepover Honda have got a ton of riders in this gate. John Bruta should have been running inside the top three. He had problems on the day, down to number 10. Noah Martins coming back from nasal surgery, so he could actually breathe in the dust. He certainly needed all the help he could out there at the opening round. A little bit dusty and rusty down there into a number nine finish eventually. Modern's will build and get faster though as the season goes on. Tyron Beverly was setting himself up for a top five ride until he unfortunately collapsed his wheel. Smashed into a rock, had to go and get a wheel change done and still finished inside of a top eight. There's more to come for Beverly. Ross Ramsayer, a former high school 125 racer, now making the bold move up into the OR3s. We'll see a lot of names that we'll recognize from former categories making those moves up. Ramsayer, good enough for a number seven. He'll develop as he gets more comfortable with his machinery. Brendan Swanepoel, also a 125 racer, was on Shurko last year, remains on Shurko this year, gets promoted into the pro categories and up into a tasty top six. So who broke the top five numbers? Hayden Colt, who came back from a peppered season last year. Lots of injuries and problems for the KZN native. He's reacting nicely though. Got a good setup on his machine, comfortable on his ride. And he takes it into a number five for Honda. He had a great dice in the early stages. Worth a little Kerbis Mester. Ryan Angeli. Love the motocross sections on the track, and what's not to love, this guy has taken some big numbers in his pro motocross racing career. 
absolutely zero experience in cross country racing and boom, he comes out banging it. Fourth place for Ryan Angerly. What a story. You gotta know he's gonna keep that seat at Pepsi Plastics nice and warm for the rest of the season. Ryan Angerly takes us to fourth place, but we'll talk about the rest of the guys inside the top three a little bit later on in the show because they crack the top 10. We'll focus now into the OR2 category where T. Carrawa takes the gas gas machine all the way to a number eight ride. Remember, Harua has been a man on the move lately, getting good in the Pro-Am category, and now steps up into full national championship racing. Ruan Merry, always rock solid. He'd have been surprised to finish down there into a number seven ride, but the reason is everyone has got tasty and the gates are stacked high and wide in 2023. Merry, good enough for a number seven ride with Matty Snayman. This is one of the stories of one of the boys we will be watching and keeping a very close eye on. Running out of VW Master Cars, VW Hatfield, his first ever national, and the top six finish to boot. Not bad running. For Ruban Racing, there was a lot of flag waving going on here for Jean Nibur. Remember, this guy has taken a couple of years to get his head around national championships. Number five, that's solid numbers. Former ladies champion from last season, on the GXCC gate and also running in the 250cc national championship last year, Leah Haygate moves up, goes on a support ride, buying a 350 and getting it done into a number four. What a story. Fastest lady out there at the moment. Carl Egger, good enough for a number three ride. Egger showed his form last year. I think this guy is gonna be a good bet for tasty top threes at every single round, remember. We're going to head down to where he's comfortable next time around in KZN. Ega takes us to top three. So the top two OR2 riders made it into the top ten. We'll talk about them in just a moment and focus back on to the OR1s where Jandre Olivier took it to a number seven ride. Nice result coming out of Jandre. Looking ever so factory fresh out there in that shift racing kit. Ian Rawl took a couple of dives along the way. He's having a crazy start to his comeback season after a full year out to get a pin put in and out of his leg. Gotta love that brawler style though. He's never gonna quit. Straight over the bars, full attack mode as always. Sixth place for the brawler. Something to build on, but it was a scrappy opening national for him. JC Nienaber trying to be the fastest Kawasaki out there at the moment. He started the season in good form. Fifth place this time around. He likes legends. He's got a good setup on his bike, but man oh man was it hard to run the pace of the riders a little bit higher up the road. JC will be relatively happy with a number five though. Now hold your breath and hang on to something because this is the top 10 overall from the Nationals. The fastest dudes out there and a mix of category races as well. 10th place in the overalls and walking away with a third place in the OR3s going to Husqvarna South Africa's new signing for 2023, Ryan Palzer. The ink is only just wet on his contract and he walks away with third place, but the pace was good enough for a top 10 in the overalls. That's a rad ride. Hayden Lowe showing us that this wasn't necessarily a small bike track as we saw four OR1 big bangers inside of the top 10. He walks away with ninth place and fourth in category for the massive CIT Franchise Co. Sleepover Honda Squad. He'll be happy with that one. Up the road from him, also a new signing to Honda coming out of the Bikers Warehouse squad, riding a 250cc Honda. It's all about Eric Merry taking a number two spot in the OR3s. That's his highest ever national championship ride and an eighth place overall. This guy came out ready to rip the bars off in 2023. Up the road from him, another one of the big 450 Hondas swinging it out there, Gareth Cole. This guy has been aching to get himself up the road. Happy enough to take a finish for a third place in category and a number seven in the overalls. A very consistent and solid start for Coley this time around in 2023. One of the stories of the day though was this dude. A rock star in the making. A new signing for Pepsi Plastics on the factory Kawasaki Vian Fensel. Went pole in the time trial for the OR3s. Took the win in the OR3s. 
his highest ever national championship win in the new category and sixth place overall. Remember, this guy is a reigning 125 national champion. This is his first national on the 250s, and he smashed it out the park. Just up the road from him was one of the superstars of the championship, a two-time national championship runner two years ago on the two Kawasaki rides that he was under the colors of Big Harry. Now he's on the Honda. Mikey Pentecost taking it to a number two finish this time around in the OR1s and a top five overall. Mikey was not happy with that, but it's good points in the bag after a tough day in the saddle. So Mike makes it into the coveted top five. Who was ahead of him? It's Scotty H, Scotty Haygate on the factory brother leader tread KTM 350. He qualified good, he raced good, and he takes it to a tasty number two ride in the OR2s, and even better, a top four in the overalls. Scotty H has polished his blade in the off season as he gets ready to take on the full championship campaign in 2023. The Wild Bunch then, the top three, the very best of the best of the best, Brad Cox, takes the win in the OR1s on the factory brother leader tread KTM 450. Back, fully fit, all the bones where they need to be and the guy is ripping the bars off once again. Takes the win in the big bangers and third in the overalls. So, top two, who could it be? Because man, these guys were ripping. One of the stories of the day and what will go down as one of the rides of the century. Kieran Fitzgerald, after only a season and a half under his belt of figuring out the sport of cross-country racing, ages out, goes up into the senior category, qualifies high and races even higher. Number two spots in the overalls, not far off the win either and an outstanding win in the seniors, putting 40 minutes into his closest competition. But the outright win on the day, as was the case so many times last year for his former teammate, Brett Swanepoel, Dav Cocker, a former multiple 250cc champion, steps onto the 350 on the factory Husqvarna, takes the win in the OR2s and takes the overall at the opener for the season of 2023. This right here is the dude to beat for the rest of the year. Cocker, right now, coming out of Legends, is the man. That was a dominating ride. Scary fast. Yeah, I, luckily I got past everyone on the first lap pretty early and managed to pull away in the rocks where it seemed like I was making my time up the most, so that was a good thing. And the track was really rough, but I managed to pull it away and keep it on two wheels. I only had one crash, which and it wasn't a bad one, so I'm happy with myself and just can only improve from here. The, the track was very mixed uh, with all rocks, straights, sand, and corners, all of, the, all of the things mixed in one. So this bike was actually just perfect because it can do everything. It's not too heavy to throw around in the corners and it still has the power to get those top end straights. So I'm happy with it. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone who made it possible, Husqvarna especially. Yeah, that's all. I actually crashed on the first lap. I had quite a big crash just before the copy. I just got past Mark. And uh, next thing I knew, I had my bike on top of me. Um, and I thought, yo, it was going to be a long day. I thought it was going to be quite dusty, but it wasn't too bad. I had sections that you could kind of like judge a little bit of where you need to make time and, and so on. But yo, I think Dave ran away with it a little bit in the beginning, and then I was trying to play catch up. And well, unlucky for Brad, but luckily I got past him just in the pits. I think he had a bit of an issue. He couldn't start his bike, or something was wrong with his refuel or something. So I managed to pass him. and not really sitting in dust too much and 
the whole day I was kind of worried about that corp, yeah. Rocks are not my friend, so I was taking it easy up there and then I was trying to capitalize on where I felt I was strong, so it seemed to work out okay. Uh, of course my family, the whole, uh, my wife, my kids, my parents, um, and obviously the team, uh, the brother leader trade team. They were, like, like we were talking this morning, they've been a KTM family of mine for their office, so thank you to them, and uh, obviously gave Tara and the whole team that helps refill and uh, give you cramp locked and tablets and everything, so thank you. Yeah, it was a long, tough day out there. Um, I won the time trial and uh, Dav caught me halfway through the first lap and yeah, he was just really going a good pace and I made a mistake, he went by and uh, I just couldn't really keep with him, you know, he just really was on it and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll come back to you, but yeah, it didn't really happen and then uh, I had a small issue in the pits. Uh, the quick filler jammed and so the bike wouldn't start and uh, Kieran passed me in the pits so yeah I was kind of trying to hunt him back down dust was a little bit bad but uh, yeah no excuses happy to take a win in OR1 and uh, yeah third overall is not too bad to start the season and we go back to KZN now round two so yeah really everything and rough really rough at there which is cool which you know it's what we train for it's what we want so uh, yeah, body is definitely uh, be feeling a bit tender tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, what an incredible day out here at round one. Um, considering, uh, I think it's my like eighth or ninth time back on the bike since I had my uh, ACL reconstructed. So overall, really happy how today went. Um, my fitness isn't where I would like it to be, but I think that's something I work, can work on before round two down in KZN, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. Overall, really happy with the day out there. Extremely rough, demanding on the body, but yeah, can't complain. Good day on the bike and look forward to what the season holds. Can't thank the Brother Leader Trade KTM team for the support and believing in me once again this year. And yeah, just to everybody behind me, supporting me back home as well. Thank you to everybody, really, really appreciate it and look forward to a good season. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I th thought we were going to do four laps, come in here, and there's no checkered flag, so I had to go out for a fifth lap. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't complain. Um, body was feeling well. Um, I, I mean, um, uh, I got lack of strength throughout the day. was feeling strong at, at the end as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a long day in the saddle. Um, all in all, no complaints. Bike was running good. Um, team was awesome. Um, yeah, so I mean, stoked to, to grab the win. Um, yeah, so... Uh, lack of start to the season. I uh, hope we can get the momentum rolling and for the rest of the season as well. Yeah, and I uh, must say, after we come down the mountain, it opens up. There's like lack of grass fields, which was very nice. Uh, tight flowing. The, all in all, the track was very good. Uh, very tight as well. I mean, uh, up there was rocky. Down here was flowing. So, so big thanks to the organizers for, organizers for putting on a good event. Um, well marked everything. So, yeah, no, very good. I uh, know. Big shout out to him, Ian. Um, yeah, like I said, big thanks to the team Kawasaki SA, Motol, um, Acebus, Bikewise, all, all of the all of the guys. Michelin, the Michelin Star Cross Six was hooking up nicely today. Um, yeah, so big thanks to all of them and a big thanks to my parents as well, my mom, dad, my sister back at home, thanks for all the support and uh, yeah, we, we're looking for a good season. Cracker of a race, great reactions, Dav Cocker takes the overall ahead of Fitzgerald, Cox, Haygate, Pentecost, Fensel, Cole, Mary, Lowe and Peltzer, those are the guys running the numbers inside the top 10. Let's check out the category breakdowns and how it all lined up. OR once was all about Brad Cox and Mike Pentecost, they're going to be chasing each other's tail for the rest of the season with Gareth Cole, Lowe, Nienaba, Rawl and Olafia to watch out for in the OR2s, yeah taking the big overall and the win in the OR2s. It's about Cocker, Haygate and Egger. Surprise package is going to be Leah Haygate as well as Nibua doing the chase down inside the top five for the OR3s. Vian Wenzel on the top step leads the championship into KZN ahead of Mary Peltzer and Angeli the surprise package on this gate. High schools all about Luke Walker getting it done ahead of Tommy Scales and Peckham with Donaldson there. But watch out for the comeback kids which will be Clarky and Karam as the season rolls on for the Age group categories, the story of the day, second overall, the highest ever senior finish at a national. Fitzgerald is the man to beat ahead of Delport and Lawrence Mahoney. For the Masters category, the old master is back. Peter Hall takes charge of the championship once again ahead of Van Skolkveig and Melis LaRue. Watch out for Farmer to rebound. What a race to start things out for the National Championship campaign. Legends, MX Track and Rhino Park once again delivering the goods. So much drama to start things out. The season can only get better from here on out. It's going to be a wild ride for the rest of 2023.
keep an eye on the press and keep an eye on the championship 2023. Whoever takes the championship overall and the categories is going to have seriously earned it. The pace is off the hook in 2023. This Hollywood Hills and LiveX production of the Trademark Group National Championships Round 1 of the Cross Country Series was proudly brought to you by VW Mastercars and the Franchise Co. So that's it, the first national is out the way. So we've got the first GXCC done, first Farm Jam is done, first national is done. Coming up soon, we've got the first round of the national extreme enduros coming around the pipe. Also, we've got the second round of the nationals coming up in Jolivet down in KZN. And we're looking forward to, obviously, for us, the big news is the second round of the Farm Jam Racing Tour at Bocciabello on the 18th of March. Entries are open, pumping, and the numbers are looking super duper strong. That's coming up this weekend. This is our final push. Guys, Bocciabello, if you have never raced a Farm Jam or if you've maced, raced many Farm Jams and missed out on Bocciabello, you've got to get there. It is epic. It really ticks the box that is hair scramble racing. You will see some of the best riding of your life. It's got a beautiful flow. Yes, there's rocks, but I promise you, they're not nasty rocks. It is nice and smooth. The track's got a beautiful flow. I rode there the first year when we were building the goon wagon, and I got to take the YZ250 out there and turn a lap. Really cool, smooth riding. You will absolutely love that place. Spectacular. Lots of elevation changes as well, so it's really good for us for the filming. So get your entries in there, guys. We want to see you out there on the line for round two. Remember, it's only a short championship, as is the case with all of the series this year. Six rounds of GXCCs, five rounds of Farm Jam, and five rounds of the Nationals. That includes a double header out there in Excelsior in the Northwest Province. So get those entries in for Farm Jam. We hold our breath for quite a long time. The 22nd of April, we're going forward with the second round of the GXCCs. That gives us a little bit of breathing room as well, because the first couple of weeks of the year has been a bit gnarly for us, but we will always keep things pumping and rolling. This weekend just passed, we had the first round in 2023 of Forge Racing. So we sent one man out there to do some incredible work on the camera. I won't tell you who it is just yet. See if you can guess. Give us some comments from the shows when they come out in the next few weeks. But Forge Racing looks like a partner we're going to be working with on one of the smaller tours. So we're dead excited to get that involvement going and watch out for Hollywood to roll that out over the next couple of weeks. Right now, we're heading into Farm Jam. That's going to be our focus point from here on out. Hope you guys enjoyed the national coverage. And big thanks once again to Big Chris and Big Harry for making that happen. Now we get ourselves ready to go back into Farm Jam mode. See you out there.